to the HLS Season 2 Land Finals. I'm Azamu Kuti, once again joined by Chalky and our new guest on the Caster Desk. It is Dom Dis. How you doing, man? Great. Thank you for having me back. Love casting. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, you qualified for the round of eight yesterday, so you'll be playing some more tomorrow, but today you're just hanging out in the studio, relaxing, yep. watching the games. Exactly. Just seeing everybody have a good time and mm -hmm. enjoying the matches. Yeah. Chalky, how'd you enjoy that last series? Last series was pretty good. I mean, we had a bit of a hiccup, but... Pretty interesting games. Got to see a lot of flavor choices from yeah. Dublos, and excited to see him move on. See if maybe an underdog can kind of come out of group. Yeah, it's cool to see the the sort of new players, the unknown players, make it through like Dongdis. So uh, let's take a look at the bracket from what we've seen so far from Group C. We started off the day with Raynad versus Roger, and Roger took that one three to one. And then of course the matchup we just watched between Dublos and Oskaka ended three one as well in favor of Dublos. So we're going to move on to the winner's match here between Roger and Dobolos. And of course, the winner of this match does get that first place seed from the group and automatically qualifies for the round of eight for the playoff stage tomorrow. So exciting stuff. Definitely. I really enjoyed Dobolos' decks. The, yeah, yeah. The fin of death in his hunter was, was pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that run in a long time. And then also having the Leroy in his hunter. So it's kind of like a combo lock. Pretty cool. Yeah. It's the first one, maybe the only one that we'll see this weekend. Mm -hmm. It's a bold choice for your sort of first uh, land tournament to bring decks that are different, but really respect him for that. Roger meticulously looking over his notes. Throughout the past couple of days, he's been at the studios, but the whole time he's been back there just like playing Hearthstone. Right. Repping. Yeah, he hasn't been in the player's box with us kind of just like talking. Well, yeah. he doesn't speak English, yeah. right? So it makes yeah. it tough. But yeah, he's just been back there sitting at his computer and just studying and prepping the entire time. Mm -hmm. So if he does well, he definitely deserves it. He's putting in the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very focused. I I heard he and Silent Storm were just kind of watching the matches yesterday, talking about the different plays that they would have made, pointing out, you know, what they thought was a mistake and just very analytical, almost like they were casting the games just to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Double Oast looked like he was in a little bit of a trance there. Yeah. Leaning back in his Just chair. Getting in the zone. Uh, I shouldn't have ate those tacos. Be good. <laughs> so we get to start with Warrior versus Patron. Or w Patron Warrior versus Hunter, which okay. we've seen a lot this tournament. And not really a ridiculous matchup either way. Mm -hmm. This is the Strange Fain Death Hunter. So, yes. I hope it comes into play this round. Yeah, me too. I want to see some awesome Fane of Death stuff. Yeah, it's it's a little bit weird of a card because if you get that in your opening hand, it's kind of bad. Because oh, the yeah. only <laughs> things you can <laughs> yeah. use it's early on bad. is like Web Spinner and you don't want that. Haunted Creeper. Yep. And well, you'd much rather have like another two drop oh, in yeah. that spot. Definitely. Like even like a Loot Hoarder might even be better than Fane Death in that situation a lot, a lot of times. But, yep. uh,. Um, later on in the game, you can make pretty sick plays with Savannah Hymane or, or Sylvanas. Well, it actually seems pretty bad in this matchup, though, because it it's going to make two twos from the Savannah right. Hymane and one twos from the Sludge Puncher. Those are <laughs> bad. In yeah, this yeah. Shoot, definitely you don't want that. It, really, I mean, it do, still does Hunter things. Like, to be honest, right. the Fane Death might not even yeah, matter. Yeah. Here's what's going to happen this game is Double O's wants to do Hunter things, not. Fain death. I don't think he put Fain <laughs> death in for this matchup, right? right? Yeah. So he might just, you know, ideally he probably doesn't want to draw it. Just wants to be cool. Yeah, we saw it that one time. Now he just never wants to see it again. He's like, okay. Yeah, oh. I beat Oskaka with uh, Fain <laughs> death, death Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. yeah. Sounds You're, pretty cool. Your deck was literally just the Hunter deck, but you put Fain <laughs> death in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still sounds pretty cool though. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. he loves his flares. I hit a uh, hit top 100 legend with Steam Weedle Sniper Hunter was the lay in the hotel. We didn't really ever activate Steam Weedle <laughs> Sniper. We just pointed our hero power at our opponent's face. That was fun. It was just a two three at the end of the day. It was a two three that let us BM a bit better. <laughs> yeah. Try to hover over the minions for a little bit and say, oh no, I'm going yeah, face. I'm going face. Yep. Yeah, I think we're gonna see Unleash here. Um, Roger was probably thinking if he unleashes, at least that means he's not developing like a shredder. But there just is no shredder in the hand, so yeah. not even a tough choice for double O's. 
But of course, he's going to make it seem like a tough choice. We've seen him do this before. Of course. He's going to hover over every car, right? <laughs> so you guys can uh, prove me wrong here because there might be some turns that I missed, but I think we've seen four or five niches today and one hover. Uh, I haven't been keeping track. I'm sure it's close to 33% of each of them, TJ. <laughs> no, of course. No. <laughs> I've been assured by the people at Blizzard. There's no bias in the Animal Companions. Okay. I trust you, Do you Jockey. believe it, TJ? I trust you. Or do you think there's some, uh, some Misha hacks today? Just Misha hacks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do five. Yeah, I mean, that frothing's gonna live. Yeah. What else can you do? Playing owls seems pretty weak uh, because yeah. all you're doing is weaving in a hero power. Yep. You know, I, I want to give a shout out to my homie, Starving Buzzard. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since he's been in competitive play. Mm -hmm. There he is, you know, probably not gonna see play. Yeah. But good time. cheering from the sidelines. <laughs> I enjoyed the times when it used to be what three mana, two mana, two, two mana. mana, two mana. Holy! Wow, Ooh. you guys are like, whoa! I was like, what? Uh, I remember those days. I think we'll see whirlwind, or no? Mm, you can't whirlwind execute and patron. Is unfortunate. So I guess just whirlwind, and maybe even just trade in your. Frothing You're frothing just to keep those patrons alive. Yeah. Then you'll have the one-two slime left yeah, over. Yeah, you'll to have the one-two slime. Oh uh, well, if you play that, okay. then you won't have the one-two slime probably. But so I'm not going to inefficiently spend anything. It looks like. Or no. I think I like the world one. Dread Corsair is like ah, it's weaker to what bow? Because yeah. you traded it anyway. Well. Right. But this keeps the frothing alive, yeah. so... Roger's going really low here, but he's definitely recognizing a Fane Death Hunter's slow. They don't play much burst. We haven't even seen a quick shot from that deck. <laughs> right, that's true. It's yeah. what the Fane Deaths are in there, like, in place of, I'm Potentially, sure. Potentially. I mean, you do have to kind of load your top end. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a quick shot, or even two, but when you haven't seen them, you know, it gives you a little bit more freedom, like we saw Oskaka maybe not playing around combos much. When you don't see it, mm -hmm. you kind of don't want to play around it. Mm. So basically, Roger can kind of go as low as he wants. His hero power is just going to cancel out double Osa's hero power. I don't and know if, if I go he ever that draws far. as low as he wants, as low as he yep. wants, TJ. Yep. Look at that hunter hand. No damage. Get it to one health, and he'll be uh, still he, happy. He could, he could owl that taunt and get get him in the face for one with that slime. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Smork him. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad I can't feign death the face. <laughs> oh, man. You know, he hovered over it. Uh, he Typical might be double of Here we go. He's, he's going he's, for it. He's going for the one damage. Oh. All right. Oh, oh so that excited. didn't quite hit the face. <laughs> Dang it. Well, this isn't going to work out very well. Maybe he's, like, faking explosive trap. Mm -hmm. oh. eh. The Dread Corsair is probably just going to get frozen. Starving Buzzer does oh, have some... Wait. Hmm. Okay. So, a good read by Roger. Yep. If he didn't want to bounce the Dread Corsair. And he did draw that armor spell like I was talking about. So, pretty good for him. Yeah. Especially with a Battle Rage to <laughs> draw as many cards as he wants. <laughs> You know, yeah. I think Roger basically has locked up the game at this point. Yeah. That Battle Rage, it's... And this board state. <laughs> yeah. He's going to gain a lot of armor, draw a lot of cards, answer any threat he wants. He's got another patron in case. Like, why do you even need that? Starving Buzzard actually has some interesting uses. If you trade in your Savannah High Main right. with a Starving Buzzard on board... True. You get the two draws from the, the hyenas that come out. Reminded so, me of the good old times, TJ. Oh. So like now you, you can't like make the play where you just a starving buzzard and then play something. Like turn eight is the combo now. Of what it used to be with oh, the Oh man, it used to be turn four. Uh, Savannah used to be five mana. Imagine if Vein Death existed back then. Wow. It might be slightly better. <laughs> slightly <TJ>. better. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Actually, you know what? Vein Death actually would have been worse because Hunters did Hunter things even better back then. Yep. So Vein Death just would have been worse. Maybe Debolos is just kind of like trying to style on this tournament. He's like, I don't even need 30 good cards to win. <laughs> Give me a Vein Death. <laughs> but, I don't know. He's pretty bad shape this game. <laughs> He just hasn't been able to gain traction. Yeah, you can't you can't win making this play. Like he, he's even thinking about emoting well played here. Yeah, he knows he's just dead. Or he's just contemplating what emo he should go with. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well played. Threatened. Hmm. Must feel Oops. rough when. Yeah, you're... me and me and Frodan, we were talking about the the BM meta and how <laughs> the only emote <laughs> that isn't considered BM is threatened. <laughs> Why? Like, you threaten your opponent, you're like, my magic will turn your opponent. Like, okay, how old are you? Like, five? <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a straightforward thing, while the other ones are all, like, sarcastic, and you know, they, yeah. Like, oops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and everyone's getting in here. That's going to be game for Roger. Yeah. Double O's knew it was coming. Uh, yeah. Once you let patrons sort of do whatever they want to do in that early game, didn't have enough pressure. Never really got going, and Roger is going to take game number one. Yep. Pretty easy stuff for him. Uh, patron, I'm sure he expected to get a win with. Got a little laugh from W. Lowe's here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't okay. even draw my feign death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again. It's okay. He has many chances <laughs> this time. But I'm hoping to see it eventually. Yeah. Sure. We Wait, do more, we know that he runs it? Get more we do. We okay, okay. Okay. No. Oh, we okay. definitely saw it. That was a feign death. My eyes did yeah. not deceive me. Like when I walked away, I, I saw like Sludge Belch or Savannah, so I was like, oh, there's got to be a feign death on her. We saw it in the mulligan in the first game. Okay, mm. good. And then good, he just good. killed his opponent, you know? No feign death needed. No feign death needed. The usual hunter. Yeah. All right, well, Roger still has uh, Handlock and uh, his Fast Druid uh, remaining left. Yep. So, um, Double O's has the handlock with the He's got combo. the combo handlock. He's yeah, got the right. Fain Death Hunter, which is more of a mid-range deck. And his third deck was that Taunt Druid. Druid, right. He's going to stick with the Hunter. And I think Druid's a good matchup for Definitely. it. Got those freezing traps. Yeah. I actually yeah. think both are good. Mm, I'm not sure how good the Fain Death Hunter is compared to... Yeah. Regular mid range hunter against handlock because mid range hunter against handlock is actually pretty good, but Fain Death Hunter without he didn't much have more direct much burn. damage. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, from what we've seen, I'm not sure. We did see a kill command, so he probably runs two of those. Uh, but quick shot, we don't really have any reason to believe that might have been an exclusion uh, for him. Mm -hmm. But I think if we're going to see the Fain Death played, it might be this matchup. I think Sylvanas, I doubt you keep it, but it is really good in this matchup later on. Yeah, really. Especially good. with the feign death. Double Innervate Swipe. Oh, man. What a hand. Well, the Keeper of the Grove is going to be a lot better. But it's one of those Hunter hands where, you know, it, it it's a good thing you don't actually have a Knife Juggler here because that would give the Druid a reason to keep her you. Yep. Um, I actually think that kind of the longer nothing happens, it's it's almost always in the Druid opponent favor. Yeah. Because the Druid is the one that needs the Wild Growth. They need the early board. The Druid's looking for a reason to innervate, a reason to keep her, a reason to swipe. And if you just play a high main on six and the board's pretty even, I'd say you're ahead. So he's really looking to not get Huffer here. All right, Domdis, I'm dubbing you our resident in-house Fain Death Hunter expert. <laughs> oh, so in this matchup, Fain Death Hunter versus Fast Druid, what are you looking for? I'm looking for Sylvanas Fain Death to steal his war. Wow. That's what I'm looking for. That would be sick. That would That's... be sick. That's why we call you our resident <laughs> Fain Death Hunter Expert. Thank you, Domus. I wear that title with, pri <laughs> with pride. Definitely. Good. Good, good. And this could be a great TV show. Mm -hmm. Domus. 
the fame. resident fame death hunter expert. <laughs> we like the pseudo crocodile hunter, which is for fame death. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this play is really interesting. Yeah. I, I, I would just play the bow just because. Even though it's be like, no, probably just like better. Idiot. Just yeah. like, ha ha to you. Yeah, definitely. No. <laughs> Well, that's not the best because of that swipe. Uh, he really would have liked that puffer. Right. I'm actually keeping track now. Oh, okay. So we've got six Misha, one Huffer, one Leoc. TJ, I am dubbing you <laughs> our resident animal companion statistics expert. Great. Yeah. So far, it's nowhere near 33%. <laughs> Wow! Who would have known? Variance. Small sample sizes. What? Yeah, I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> Is the integrity of the game being shattered as we know it? As the yeah. resident animal companion statistician. Wait, you gotta start over, or you have to go back and fact check. I can't have you just writing like seven tallies for Misha off the top of your head. <laughs> just That's what he just did. I just wrote another one because I was like, oh, maybe there were seven. This yeah, I don't tracking. Know. Oh my. Maybe I gotta take away your title. And what do you guys think here? You think the bow's gonna get revenge on Harrison? <laughs> Looks yeah. like oh, it. Oh yeah. Mm. That must be That's good. satisfying. Mm. No turn five play really though. He's got kill command to answer something. Yep. He does play Belchers, Shredders. Yeah. He's going to get a web spinner drop if he wants. He's probably going to Owl that, though. Well, there's merit to saving Owl, because you know your opponent plays Ancient Wars. This is actually a really interesting decision. Do you really care about a 2-drop when you're going to have a 2-2 two -two and a 1-1 one -one out? No. Yeah, not really. Yeah, you probably don't, because e even if it's like a scary one, you kill Commander. Yeah. So you probably save that owl. Yeah. Well, uh, it's not that many owl targets. Wait here. a second. I, oh, I'm, I guess I'm an Angel idiot. Angel War. Rogers the Druid, not yeah. Double Os. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I knew what you meant. Uh. So you were talking earlier about how, uh, in Rogers' interview earlier, he was talking about mm -hmm. uh, how the Taiwanese scene differs from um, Europe and North America, and he was saying that. In Taiwan, they play standard. They play uh, just like normal decks. Uh, with sometimes they put in tech choices. Um, and he was saying he's not used to people playing like wonky things. He says like all the new and the fresh decks all come from um, like North American players. So this is the type of thing that he was excited to play against. Right, something like a Fain Death Hunter. Yeah, right? yeah. Very. I'd be excited to play against Fain Death too, personally. Mm -hmm. Hope they draw it. <laughs> <laughs> Get wrecked by it, but I'd be happy with it. Yeah. Okay. Hope they draw it and just be like, huh. opening hand fade. Nice card. <laughs> that doesn't deal damage to the face. <laughs> this is a pretty bad hand for Roger, though. Very situational. No creatures to develop. Uh, it's bad until he top decks Force of Nature next turn and wins. Mm. True. Good point. Yeah. I think Hyman is definitely I'll coming down here. Yeah. Resident druid combo kills expert. <laughs> Dumbness is also the resident. What do we do on turn six with Savannah High Main in our hand? Yes. What do you do, Domdis? You play the High Main. Okay. Whew. The real question nervous. is next turn when we have the option of trading into like a 2 2 or going face, what do we do? What do we do, TJ? <laughs> that one's really tough. Trade into the 2 2. Uh, okay. Well, it gets creatures. That's a good thing. Yeah, Lotha, actually pretty relevant. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were talking about trading into that 2 2, but he's kind of threatening with Drew the Claw Savage Roar if he leaves both minions up. I'm assuming this 2 4 is going to go into the 2 2. Roger's thinking it over, he's doing math. You can actually literally <laughs> see him writing <laughs> numbers right down. I was about to say that. And he goes face. Oh, he did the math. So, okay. I'm what, gonna trust what math him. did he do? Let's find yeah, out. There we go. Explosive I don't know. trap. Because uh, Drew the Claw, Savage Roar, Innervate Hero Power. That's what, nine? Is 16. Oh, with if his the 5-5 oh, right. lives. Okay, yeah. If the 2-4 dies. 
alone. I was like, those two numbers are quite a bit different. <laughs> Nine and 16. <laughs> so I'm a little interested. Oh, he's, right. he's leaving them both up? So oh, he's oh, one okay. off lethal here. So I'm really curious why he attacked face. Okay, but he's killed. Oh no, he's kill commanding the five. five. Okay. I actually could have seen him go for a bow there and set up for it. A next turn lethal. Well, I'm surprised Death Hunter he didn't. is a more control style of hunter. Right. Right, but you're gonna die in a turn or two. And your hand is depleting quickly. Right. Yeah, but it's it's all about the uh Druid scary. Like the, the style of the deck, you know? True. Ooh. You got a style on him, TJ? Yeah. Okay. Stick to your style. Yeah. He doesn't want to kill him too quickly because then he doesn't even get to show up. He's the killing thing. him softly. <laughs> So he's going to double taunt, which is pretty strange. I might have liked Loth that better than the second taunt. Makes it so he can't really deal with the taunts as easily. Because, like, if you Loth ebbed, you wouldn't be getting unleashed here. Yeah. You wouldn't be getting kill commanded. This is probably the best unleash he's going to get. So. Right. He's playing his hand, probably. He might hear about... No. You're playing your hand. You're playing yep. your hand. Yep. You saw Harrison come you down earlier. You could check the web spinner drop first. Maybe it'd be like an owl. That'd be pretty sick. Or a king crush. <laughs> I don't think I'd even like a king crush. Here. Or you know what? Starving buzzard. <laughs> starving. This would be the turn. <laughs> this would be the starving buzzard. You no, know, we, we talk about okay. the turn eight True. patron warrior combo, but okay. nobody ever talks about the starving buzzard. He's actually combo. not playing his hand. Starving buzzard is definitely greatly overlooked. Did he? Yeah. Yep. You make a mistake. Is he? Oh, oh, he did. Ooh, did. You could he see did. That in his face. He planned on unleashing, and he thought, "Wait, before I throw these knives, <laughs> let me make let sure me... it doesn't hit this force." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's rough. he doesn't get too punished, but that's still bad because now he can't clear the slime, and he's gonna go down to fourteen. And uh, oh, and he got the silver back. He's on a draw to win the game now. Roger is force of nature. He well says well played because he assumes that he, he has assumes. the combo. Double Savage Roar and Swipe he does not have mana for. Would that be lethal? That would have been It'd one, be one off. Eight, nine. Yeah, that would have been one off. So we can swipe here, be left with the hyenas, and then yeah. low with it. Yeah, I'd like that. And then just the question is do you swipe face? And I'm sure Roger will do the math on that. All right, so if he swipes face, <laughs> he leaves up. Uh, he he throws in a slime, but he puts him down to ten. He's left well, with the load on board. I put the slime to face too. You can't really just leave up the knife drop. Yeah. Nice. I think with load up down, you're pretty safe. Oh no! If you leave up the knife drop, he actually gets two knives from those hyenas. Yeah. That, that's really bad. So. Yeah. So load up alone is lethal, but there's a freezing trap. But this if you freezing trap, you're not really setting up lethal either. I think the Silverback Patriarch might even be <laughs> You think he's going to get in there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because the freeze. No, because either way it blocks four, because the freezing trap will yeah. block either a, a treant. Right. Yep. Yeah, just a treant, and then Silverback Patriarch will also uh, block a treant. Well, if he has combo, you're dead no matter what. Yep. Yeah. And you know he didn't have it previously, so freezing trap and... Patriarch are about the same. And Freezing Trap gives you a bow charge. Freezing Trap does give you a bow charge. Your opponent's still pretty healthy, though. Like, you're taking him not to nine. He goes to six from the bow, four from your hero power, and then you have four on board, so hero power leaves you one off. Mm -hmm. That's a little unfortunate. Yeah. He's going to have to top deck something. <laughs> and that's assuming Roger doesn't kill him. I think I like Freezing Trap slightly better. Yeah. So now, on a force of nature draw to win the game, or a. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, through the yeah. ball wouldn't do it. Oh! oh there it is. Go. The force of nature that's, off the top. Yeah, that's yeah. one of our first big top decks. Of yeah, the seriously. Yeah. We've we had a couple had minor lethal. ones, but not many that have just ended the game right on the spot. So that's going to be it. Wow. And Roger, Roger sequences it perfectly, plays yep. around Explosive Trap, plays around Misdirect. Yep. All right, well, Roger's going to take a very quick 2-0 lead in this series. And Double Oath, after coming off 
an impressive victory over Oskaka. He's got his work cut out for him. Yeah. He's got to beat the uh, handlock from Roger three times in a row. Ooh. That's doable, though. It is doable. We've yeah. seen the combo lock. I think that's, you know, if your opponent doesn't have any way of killing you, having Leroy's nice. Definitely. Hunter's favored. And Druid, you know, maybe favored. He does kind of have a slower Druid list, yeah. which is a little worse. But we saw him beat Oskaka's handlock quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so he does have a chance, but, I mean, with three tries, Roger still in a pretty dominating yeah, position. for sure. And Definitely. keep in mind, this uh, matchup, the winner of this matchup goes out of Group C in first place. This is the winner's match, so yeah. the winner moves on to that playoff stage tomorrow. They, Of course, first place means they'll be matched up against someone who was second place in their group, yep. so a slight advantage possibly there for coming out in the first seed. The loser has to play another game to try and qualify. The loser of this match will go on to face the winner of the loser's match. So you never want to play more games when it comes down to the line like that where you, you're fighting yeah. for a chance at the at the final round, at the round of Of course eight. you never want to lose. And also, like you said, there's a little bit of an edge to getting first in your group. Definitely. As on paper, you will be facing a weaker player in a second seed. Yeah, Dominus, you actually... Uh, came out of your group second place yesterday. I went the long route, losing first and <laughs> having to uh, go yeah. through the loser side of it, but yeah. You talked about how you were tired at the end of the day. It was pretty tiring. After cast, casting made me a little bit sleepy yesterday, definitely. <laughs> and then I had like a, maybe like 10 minutes before I had to play and I was, I thought I was gonna like fall asleep on the couch, but luckily it turned out okay. Mm -hmm. And it was a long day, right? We finished at like 10.30. Yeah, yeah, it was super long. Filled with Hearthstone, though. Yeah. No such thing as a long day when you're watching Hearthstone. A lot of fun. Right, Jockey? Good old Hearthstone, TJ. Card slinging action. Speaking of Hearthstone, yeah. we've, we've got a game here. We do have we a do. game. And uh, Double O Snark going first. I believe he's the favored player here. He has the Leroy combo in his deck. Yep. We assume there's probably a Faceless Manipulator in here somewhere. Uh, he could just be running with only Leroy in power, but... It'd be interesting, just because you couldn't actually faceless the Leroy in power, right? Yeah, so. without the Emperor. Yeah, exactly. Emperor yeah. is the only thing that opened up this deck to be good. You right. only have to have one piece of the combo right. in True. your hand. It's not that unlikely that on your Emperor turn you have a power, faceless, or Leroy in your Very hand. true. But the Emperor is sort of what unlocks it. So if the Emperor is in the bottom part of your deck, then that combo just becomes nothing. And sometimes you have to realize that and say, Oh my goodness, my Emperor could be my last card. Yeah. I have to use Power of Roaming now. Something like that. That sounds That was like, my best <laughs> that sounds professional Hearthstone player impression. No, that sounds straight out of like a Yu-Gi-Oh! show <laughs> or something. You sounded s You were like the, you were like the really. side character explaining what's going on in the game. Yeah. Well, if Tempo Storm needs a character for their cartoon. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I'm there on it. <laughs> That's your application. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of their cartoon, I heard W. Lowe's might actually write for their cartoon. Whoa. He's, uh, he graduated from Oklahoma with a uh, screenwriting degree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember him saying that in, in his interview. That's, yep. He just graduated, too. Mm -hmm. He was talking about it in his interview, trying to explain to his family, hey, I know I just graduated college and all. I know you just paid I'm gonna go play Hearthstone, a yeah. money. I'm, I'm flying to California to, uh, to play a card game. Yep. Not going to hey, be man. writing at all. Why not? See ya. Later. Yeah, Roger actually oh, traded in his 4-1 Twilight Drake into a Watcher to Mortal Toilet. So, yep. respecting a Watcher, which is traditionally not that big of a deal, usually gets taunted up in this matchup. Yeah. So, just wants to get that out of the way. Also, potentially playing around like Mortal Coil, trying to get value out of the Drake. Well, I think it was pretty clear his opponent didn't have a Mortal Coil since he owled and then didn't coil. Right. But playing around potentially the top deck coil and just, yeah. just basically clearing a, a strategic path in his mind that, like, if everything, you know, if there's no variables, I think I'm going to win this game. I've got a beast in my side. And we do think Roger is aware of the Leroy Jenkins. He's been watching all these games, especially oh, yeah. his group's games. I think the Leroy, the, Leroy the came off here. the top yep. right at the end of that game. Yep. Pretty unfortunate for Double Loose. And of all the players here, I think 
Rogers, the one who s definitely will know everybody's decks inside and out because he's been watching carefully and studying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the early game in handlock versus handlock is sort of a little bit of an interesting dynamic. It's yeah. like who has threats and then right. who has answers. Exactly. So it's it's like Drake, Owl Mortal Coil, yeah. Giant BGA. It's a lot of yep. trading. Yeah. Like right. You're just trading resources, replenishing resources, and then it's very hard to actually keep track of of what's going on and who's ahead because it just seems like okay, he has answers, he has answers. They both have a few threats. They just keep answering everything. Nobody yep. wants to go aggressive. Yep. But. The more that happens, the more it tends to favor this player with the X Factor, like Leroy Power Overwhelming. Because you can only play around that for so long, and the plays that play around it tend to be less efficient. Exactly. And I think normally in the handlock mirror, like in a, an ordinary handlock mirror, like a lot of it comes down to just like trying to control the board until whoever gets Jaraxxus out first. And then if you have, you right. know, if you're safe to Jaraxxus, you'll probably win. But in this case, you know, Draxing, and then you just get comboed yeah. down by the Leroy. There's, and there's no safe. There's in no this safe Draxis yeah. against the combo lock. Also, we did see in the mirror between Oskaka and Double O's, the way that was decided was just an unanswered Emperor, mm -hmm. and so that can be one way to just completely win. And we saw last turn that Roger didn't really have a way to kill that Drake, didn't have a way to get through that Belcher. He could <sighs> potentially just safely Emperor behind this Belcher. And make Roger overextend to kill it. Yep. And he is reducing one piece of that combo. We see the power overwhelming hand. So it's gonna go down to zero. So that opens up the five mana Leroy power overwhelming and five mana faceless. Yep. If he if he has the faceless in the deck. Yeah. And it Which, looks, I mean, looks like he's gonna trade to kind of like play it. around Hellfire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but not trade in with the Belcher. He wants to make it as difficult as possible to get through this Belcher for his opponent. Mm -hmm. Whether that be an owl, an AOE card any of that, he just wants it to not be easy. Yeah. However, Roger is one of the few players that sticks by Siphon Soul. Uh, operates as a pretty solid answer to an Emperor if you don't have anything else. I like the Siphon Soul. Yeah, he's got a lot of ways to actually kill that Emperor, unlike Oskaka. So. He does. What are you usually cutting for the Siphon Souls? Another six stop? Do you have to like choose between Emperor Thorsen and Sylvanas or I think it comes down to a lot of your tech cards where some players are running double owl, mm -hmm. double dark bomb, double ancient watcher, double uh, big game hunter. Somewhere along the lines I think Rogers probably cut one of those few cards and subbed in a siphon soul. Yep. And he's gonna go for it this turn. Pretty clean way to deal with it. It is indeed. So one big thing about this matchup also is uh, not overextending. Because one of the ways you can get punished is by big shadow flame plays. Right. Uh, because if you put too many threats on the board, you overextend into like even just like Watcher Shadow Flame or a giant shadow flame. It's something you always gotta be keeping in the back of your mind. You wanna put enough threats out there so that you're still applying pressure, but not too many to where a Shadow Flame play would just completely take you out of the game. Yeah. I think Rain had touched on it a little bit before in that Handlock's, you know, biggest tool is just the Molten Giant Shadow Flame. It clears everything, I'm like, guaranteed. Yeah. So we're even going to see no attack already. Just going to leave him at 17. 17 tends to be a lot better than 16 for, like, you just talked about the big Shadow Flames. However, with the Emperor cost reduction to, I think it hit, like, eight cards, yeah. uh, it's pretty likely it hit a Molten or a Shadow Flame. But there's no reason to hit him anyway, just in case he didn't, right. didn't have those. So Yeah, Roger's not even close to setting up lethal, so no reason to really free up your opponent's so Molten. Many possibilities. So Mountain Giant here, but then what do you play after? You don't want to play Double Giant because of the fa the things that we mentioned earlier. Well, you definitely want to get rid of that Emperor. I uh, we were just yeah. talking about how two activations of it can completely crush the game. So he's going to go with an Argus into Shadow Flame, abusing the his own Emperor cost reductions to squeeze all that in in one turn. It goes the back and forth. Yep, emperors are completely out now. 
Uh, Roger has quite a few more cost reducted cards, but quite a few of them aren't too relevant. Yeah. Um, gonna have to find a way to make it count. It seems like Double O's is gonna be the first player to have a threat stick right, this for is, a full turn. Yep. And especially, like, we see Roger taunting up like crazy. Because he knows, he knows, he knows that combo. one taunt is not enough to save you. Yeah. Owl, Leroy, P.O., you're dead. Yep. Yeah. Oh, here's another card. That's sort of a, a, I guess you can call it somewhat of a piece of the combo. Yeah. Because right. you can set someone at 15. And or then you can use it down. defensively against hunters. Yep. It's like a Jaraxxus. Jaraxxus that doubles as another 8-8 eight, eight and a form of offense. Yeah. I think in the past, some handlocks actually used to run both. Yeah. Back when uh, Aggro Hunter was one of the best decks. Oh, back uh, when? Yeah. Interesting. It's, okay. It's still pretty good now, TJ. So, Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, but Alex Draws is definitely a, an uncommon choice. We haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah. But one thing to consider is, even with Roger taking all these precautions to stay alive, will it ultimately matter? Because that's a pretty inefficient play at the end of the day, Definitely. taunting up a Sun Fury. It's just going to die. And then what? You're, we see Double O still has tons more threats. And like you said, that giant went unanswered. How's Alex Straza going to be answered? How's a, how's a Molten Giant going to be answered? And as these threats build up and the threat of the 10 from hand damage comes in, it's going to get tougher and tougher for Roger. Into the breach. This is pretty solid, though. Finds a way to deal with the Sylvanas easily. Right, I like this. And then now you can just Molten. I'm sure he's afraid of the combo, but what can yep. you do at this point? Yep. Yeah, there's always that point in games against Druid or against combo classes in general where you just have to hope they don't have it. Yep. You realize yeah. you cannot beat it. So now comes back to what you're talking about about overextending, where you don't want to play all your threats at once. Like here he has four <laughs> seven sevens, eight eights. <laughs> you probably pace them out one at a time because one Definitely. is enough to kill your opponent. Yep. yep. Just one and then the sludge, yep. And so, He's not going to even need the combo once again. Yep. But again, just a threat of it. Yeah. yeah. Has been causing Roger to have to take really defensive lines. Right. I mean, he had to throw out both his taunters on the same turn just because he was afraid of it. So definitely. So you think it's sort of in a similar vein as Druid. No matter what you're playing yep. against, if you don't know the deck for sure, or if you know that there's one combo, you always have to play around it regardless. And that's one of the, the strengths of it is because even if you're just running full taunt it, sometimes it'll yep. force people to play a little bit inefficiently. Exactly. Just because you're threatening it. Well, with the old combo lock deck, I actually found one of the best ways to go about beating it was to never respect the combo. It was a four card combo being our king and power overwhelming, power overwhelming faceless manipulator. And the odds of them having those four exact cards in the top, you know, 20-ish cards weren't actually that high. And if you kept trying to play defensively, they would keep removing your defense. And you would let them draw their whole deck, and then you'd lose anyway. Right. So you'd have to go for a more offensive line where you find a way to win the game before they can get the combo, which is what Roger might have to do. That makes a lot of sense. But there's a lot of threats in Double Oasis' hand. And now, without that one Shadow Flame, it's gonna be rough. He actually can boom Shadow Flame, but that won't clear 8-8s. Eight now he's able to heal up as well because he played that second Molten Giant, so he's back up to a nice, comfy 16. Yeah. Building a wall as well. We're really getting to the end game now. Double Oasis just hovered over his own deck. He has six cards left. Roger can't be too far ahead or behind. So in the regular season of the Legendary Series, a lot of times we saw players that went up 2-0 and then lost that third game. Actually went on to lose the whole series. We saw a lot of reverse sweeps. Right. Dominus, I want to get your opinion on this. Is when you have a lead like that and you start losing, is there like a, 
a momentum effect that takes place? Do you start panicking and think, oh my god, I still just need to win one more? How does that play into your head? It almost happened to me yesterday while I was playing lead paint. I was up 2-0, and then he came back and tied it up 2-2. And especially the second to last game when he tied it up 2-2, it was against you know his face hunter, and he yeah. got me with the perfect lethal at the end. But I don't think it really, my mindset wasn't affected that much. I still just looked at it as you know the next game, and you know, you start out the game just the same as you start out all the games, right? Yeah. So you just hope to not have a bad draw. So, I mean, I'm sure it's different for every player depending on, you know, your mindset. And that's game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's also that's game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even with the low that power warming still costs five. He's going to take his time to do the math. Thank Make sure you, that you got Emperor. a 100%. <laughs> exactly. Order, order. But yeah, yeah. power overwhelming costs negative one. Yeah. And Very just like I talked about, you, you can play around it all you want, yeah. but it's got inevitability on you. You're going to yeah. run out of taunts. You're going to run out of fields. Yeah. Actually, cost zero. Cost zero. Cost zero, yeah. Yeah. Nice fight with the man. <laughs> yeah. Caster math. That's how it goes down. But double O's keeps himself alive. Roger still only needs one victory. He's got two more chances to find a win with Hanlock. He's got to yeah. take down the Fane Death Hunter or the uh, Druid. The... Um, it's not a fast druid, it's a taunt druid with one combo, single combo. Right. As far as we know, anyway. Could yeah. have two roars, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Pretty common. Yeah. At least one of each. Mm -hmm. Right. And like you were talking about with the reverse sweeps, a lot of times I think players will potentially save their worst matchups for when they're up 2-0. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to save it for last. Like, I can get three tries. You know, it's kind of like a feel-good thing, but... In reality, these these three matchups are all individually in Double O's favor. Yeah. And I, I would actually say, well, I guess Druid might be the toughest, followed by the Handlock. And Hunter is actually kind of his best. But I feel like he, he kind of went off Hunter just to get his mind in the right state. You know, you can go in any order you want once you're down 0-2. You have to win with everything anyway. Right. So reset the RNG. Mm -hmm. Reset the RNG. I yep. believe in that. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. When I'm laddering and I play like a bunch of games in a row with one class, and I'm starting to get bad luck, I'll play one game with another class. Mm -hmm. Reset okay. the RNG. Yep. Okay. It's tried and true method. What happens Battle when you lose exactly. that one too? Do you just rage quit? So then I quit. Walk away. Yeah. I queue up an arena run, go 0-3, and can. then I hate my life. Yeah. You ever have one of those days where you just can't win a game of Hearthstone? <laughs> I have. We know. Yeah. Feel the pain. Some of those have been publicly televised. Some of those are public <laughs> tournaments, right? <laughs> At well, least me, when I have days where I can't win a game of Hearthstone, I'm sitting in my room in right. my underwear. Just in my underwear, chilling by myself. I feel the shame, but you know nobody else gets to yeah. feel the shame with me. Poor Chucky. Yeah. Well, for some people, unfortunately, their bad days come at bad times. <laughs> both of these players fighting to get into the top eight. They're both in the winners' match, right. so this still got another this chance. This won't eliminate them. They have regardless. something to feel good about. Yep. And this is actually a uh, pretty, uh, it's an okay curve for Double O's. He's got Mad Scientist into um, potentially Coin Piloted Shredder. His curve after that's going to be a little wonky because he doesn't have like a turn three play right. besides Coin Piloted Shredder. But if he Coin Piloted Shredder. Shredder, he doesn't have a turn four. Yeah. The Molten Giant, probably going to be pretty important. But one of the issues as the handlock against this slow hunter isn't really dying super fast. It's the hunter setting up such a board that you can't remove it and if you heal you're basically just stalling yeah and you just don't have efficient answers to something like savannah high mate you can't owl and siphon on six you can't really shadow flame as long as they don't put you right in the molten range and we do see you know shredder lotheb high main so he's going to set up that really big board Two traps is a little unfortunate for him, especially with the scientist out, but... Have we seen two freezing traps? Does he run two freezing, one explosive? Uh, I don't think we've seen enough of his traps to know if he has three. I would assume he does have three, though. Generally, people that run explosive trap run it in addition to their two freezings. Yep. Uh, that seems to be the common trend. Dom, what do you think of snake trap? 
it catches me off guard a lot, so I hate it. There it is. <laughs> yeah. I'll randomly just be like, oh, you know, I don't expect it, especially on ladder when I'm just playing pass and not yeah. paying attention, and all of a sudden it comes out and I just get wrecked. Oh, it's snakes. It's snakes. I, uh... See, I love Snake Trap, and I always test with it a lot. And then the people I'm testing with get like super used to Snake Trap, and they start playing around it all the time. Oh, yeah. They just keep going sucks. face. Yeah, they just go face, and it's the worst trap in the world. <laughs> Your card I love, Snipe. So, oh, yeah. You know, Snipe always like gets Ryan. me, because I never play around it, but it always gets me in like the stupidest way where it doesn't even matter. I'm like, okay, I'll play my 2-1. Okay, that got sniped. Good for you. Uh, go. Snipe is great until people expect snipe. I think it's still not great then. You can't get sniped. No. You can't snipe people. Ooh, yeah. I, I disagree. I think it's great. You think it's great? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. You can get an yeah. Azure Drake with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> First iteration of a pilot of Shredder. If you have spell power on the board, you can kill a Lotha. Oh. Wow. There we go. Sick plays. Yeah, you can't argue with that. Top tier. You know, the guy that hit number one legend, uh, that oh, ended yeah. number one legend on Europe last season, uh, used double misdirection. Mm -hmm. Not as good as Snipe. <laughs> Not as good as Snipe. <laughs> yeah. Turns out all the hunter traps are just good. Mm -hmm. All of them. Yeah, especially Snipe. That's a lesson <laughs> I've learned today. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm just going to go pure trap hunter, double of everything. All right, Animal oh, Companion. Boy. Show me what you got. I think, you know, it's, it's, okay, we'll go to Domnus, our resident turn six. Of course. Hunter the, expert. Okay. I would say, what do you think here? The Savannah high main. Okay. I'm Sounds gonna, about right. We'll go ahead and agree I with you I think what he's kind of sad about is that that Sun Fury is going to get freeze grabbed. That is it. But he has another one. The only way to deal with that, though, is to kill command it. Now, if you Good. don't get Savannah high main down Actually, this turn, it, then any time you play it in the future, your opponent can Owl Siphon. Yeah, he can unleash Kill Command and clear off everything. Oh, he's going to rope the turn six high main. Pretty tilting if you're Roger. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, okay, you had really bad plays. <laughs> Monocoil, pretty timely. Yep. And might see Siphon anyway. No, looks like he, do he isn't considering it too much. Mm -hmm. I got this. He's gonna test for freezing. He's pretty sure one of those is freezing, and by pretty sure I mean he's like a hundred percent sure. Right. Here comes the snake trap. Because he he watched Double Los play two games with this hunter. I yeah. Got this. He played against it twice himself. I he's got probably this. feeling pretty good about his chances after. Okay. I think the only thing he was thinking about was like, what if that other one's snake? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or snipe. Or snipe. Oh. No. Oh man, good old hunter secrets. It's like, which one should I get sniped? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. what he's thinking. <laughs> that was yeah. that TJ. That's what he's trying to decide between the two. Yeah. Which one should I get sniped? Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly his thought process. I'm hoping to start a meta game. I'm just gonna play so much hunter, and every single game I'm gonna play snipe. Okay. See how long it takes me. Jockey, you with me? Dom, is you with me? I'm with you. Us three, one legend. We can, yeah, if it. three people all play Snipe, we could start the snowball effect. We right. can shape the meta. Yes. Everybody playing around Snipe will be awesome. We need to get like all the streamers playing it. Mm -hmm. People just blindly copy it. Mm -hmm. yep. it just lead to people never playing so Snipe. He's going to siphon the 6 1. Ooh. Well, that's harsh, but it works. Yeah. And now the owl's threatening to get freezing trapped. And this is basically how you play around Freezing Trap as the handlock. You just yeah. don't attack. And especially with Lord Jaraxxus in your deck against a Slow Hunter, you have inevitability. Like, your opponent has to kill you. You don't yeah. have to kill them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, unleash the Hounds. He's not guaranteed to get a better one. And he's got to get to the Sludge Belcher somehow. What is he going to do after this, though? Kill command and the sludge he's kill command. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. He he really doesn't want that owl getting freezing. Yeah. Besides, that would not work well. And the hunter is really running out of steam. Uh, it's not like he really has any burn in his hand. It's time for the Sylvanas Bane death. 
It's time for the Sylvanas faint Where death. is that faint death? He's got to be Come only on, running oh, one. He'd get... Must be, yeah. <laughs> you know, he actually couldn't even steal uh, with the Sylvanas. He would get a slime and two 1-1s. One and that would fill his board. True. <laughs> and then what he steals would just die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sick. Faint death is great. <laughs> All right. I'd rather have a snipe. I need some more samples for my animal companion. Yeah, TJ's over here. Yeah, he's got been, his pen on the paper. He's, he's eagerly been, watching this. His animal hands been companion. twitching right above the paper, waiting. Show me the Misha. I'm I'm gonna go. call Leok. I'll go. I'll go Hoffer. Okay. Yeah, I've just got away with the animal he's, companions. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, now we're up to. 16 Mishas, <laughs> one Hopper, Whoa. and two Leox. That escalated quickly. It was a rough estimate. Rough estimate. Nowhere near 33%. <laughs> I got a bone to pick. Okay. He's, he's, is he going to hold on to the Sylvanas until he... Until the feign death. Until the feign death. For, yep. He's going to steal that Boombot. Yeah. He's going to wait for that combo, even if it loses in the series. Yep. It's all about the swag plays. Yeah, yep. We're going to see this feign death. No matter what, it's coming out. He's going to stall until he gets it. I don't think he has many stalling <laughs> tools, unfortunately. Could get that silverback patriarch again. Yeah. So what do you freeze here? Uh... You already have a Frozen Sun Fury, but at the same time, do you really want to freeze a Boom Bot? I guess so. Depends on if you want the 1-1 one, one plus the random damage, or just the guaranteed 2-3. Goes with the guaranteed 2-3, just to get through the slime. And... Could see like a heal bot here, yeah. Double O's is pretty much out of stuff. He's out of stuff. He's gonna need that feign death. Ah, oh, dang. That's not it. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, he can knife juggle here and get a couple one ones from the hunt creeper. Maybe yeah. even trade in the web spinner to get a beast that he can play also. So. Yeah. I feel like that's what we'll see. He can he can do stuff, but after this turn, he's basically back to nothing and. Like, card for card, Roger's just going to outpace him. Right. Draxus isn't going to lose to no cards. Sniped! Sniped. Wow. wow. Oh, really? Oh. Perfect juggles. Here we go. That's incredible. Tundra Rice! Whoa! Okay. Think the Fane Death an, Synergy. He plays. He can go for an OTK plan now. It's time. <laughs> he can play Tundra Rhino, Savannah Jaime, and charge it. Fane Death, then charge the Hyenas. There we okay. go. Okay. Wow. Power play. This game's over. I can't even think of a better play. In the entirety of Hearthstone? <laughs> the entirety of Hearthstone. <laughs> okay. Well, he's. Yeah, he's holding it for that combo. You're right. That's what he's thinking of. I don't know if you can do that anymore. Like, cool, yeah. Well, he knows it's explosive. Same death. So it's a little interesting he did that. I guess he's just leaving Lumiak alone. I'm trying to race him now. He knows maybe he, only maybe he wanted to take the damage for the, for the, the Molten. Oh, no? huh? maybe, yeah. A little indecisive. Well, now he does have lethal showing. So, we... We literally have to have Tundra Rhino run into that A3. That is happening. That hurts. At least he has Leoc. At Double, least Double O's not even going to hover over all the cards <laughs> and act like it's a decision. Which one? It feels like the Sylvanas is in the deck just a combo, though. He's very reluctant to play it. There's been a couple turns where he could have just thrown it down. And yeah, there's things been no the Owl. Yeah. So, potentially... I don't know if it would have changed this game much, but... Yeah, just gonna go for the safe play here in Braxis. Yeah. You're still threatening death with that 8-8. So if he top X feign death here, is he... Do we win? Do we... <laughs> no, he has BGH. Is it win time? Oh, he has BGH. Oh, feign death. Man, never is it. 
Are you sure you That's guys saw it? it? I'm 150% sure. Look, he hovered over his deck. He's like, where's the he's thing? Like, he's like, what is this? Yeah, look, at look that. He's, he's, he's so upset. 13 like, cards. Is, if you only run one, it's not even that likely. It's like a 50% chance it's right now. 50. It's above 50. It's slightly above 50. Yeah. Look, he keeps hovering. Well, he's like... He's in John in any Dream match. match. All right, he well, the concede plays. comes out, and Roger is going to take the series. He's going to advance out of Group C in first place, moving on to that round of eight, yep. getting that first seed. He will play one of the players that gets second place in the in their group, so possibly Domdis. True. Domdis, are you scared at the prospect of playing against Roger? I am very scared. He's like the silent ninja who just comes out of nowhere and destroys you. Whoa. But, yeah. But he's definitely... um. I followed him a little bit recently because he's been doing really well in tournaments, and he is definitely a very scary player. Yeah. Solid play all around today, definitely. Yeah, Chalky, if you had had different performances and your chances to qualify <laughs> okay. always for the legendary series little, you know, finals, like, right? If you were participating, would you be scared? Well, of it's playing great Roger? because since I'm not participating, I could be completely objective. And yes, Roger is one of the scariest people in this tournament. Like, no surprise, he comes out in first in this group. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. say his. Lower than expected would have been second. Yep. And it'd be very shocking if he went out in groups. So. Yeah. Uh, First place, great for him. Pretty expected. Good luck to him in the top eight. Yeah. On the other hand, WW Los, or Double Los, as he likes to right. uh, refer to it as, uh, he'll move on to face the winner of the loser's match from Group C. So he'll face the winner of Oskaka and Reynad. So he's still got another game to play to try and qualify for that round of eight, to try and qualify for that playoff stage. Um, looking at the next matchup, Oskaka versus uh, Reynad. Yeah. What do you guys think? Well, I I don't think we quite expected to see Oskaka in the losers match. It's a tough group. He definitely okay. is going to want to prove that you know he doesn't want to go out zero two. Yeah. That'd be bad. Yeah. Neither does Reynad though. Mm -hmm. One of them's going to have to. So this is going to be a really high stakes match and two really well known players that have. Had pretty good finishes in tournaments before. Yeah, definitely. I've heard a statistic somewhere that Otsukaka's win percentage just overall, like that Blizzard has, is the highest in the world. So he wow. could be considered the best player in the world right now. Yeah. And so he is definitely, it was definitely surprising to see him go down, but he's a great player, no mm -hmm. doubt. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have to see about that match in a little bit. But we do have a winner interview with Roger, who's standing on by the stage with Dan. That's right, Azuma. We have our first round of eight finalists for day number three of day number two in Group C. It's Roger from Team Wave Spider. That was a pretty quick series, all things considered, even though there were some tough turns. Uh, it seems like you don't really take too long to think about your turns. Is that a result of practice? Like, what's the secret of you playing so quickly compared to some other players like Life Coach who take a long time? Uh, you have a Mimi. 因为都跟我一开始想的差不多，所以我就打得很快。Uh, it goes all according to plan, so I play pretty fast. Ooh, okay. So every player is so easy to figure out and goes according to his plan. Very calculating. I like it, Roger. That's cool. Uh, so you've you've been here for a little bit of time, and you have the rest of the day off because you advanced first place. Um, and, and I don't know how you've enjoyed your time in America so far. I like to ask this question because. Um, you know, when you go to Asia as, as a Westerner, sometimes things are a little bit weird to you. Do you find anything weird specifically when you come to America to travel? Like, what's the weirdest thing that you've experienced so far? Uh, Everything, no, everything's pretty usual and standard. <laughs> kind of like the Taiwanese players. Huh? <laughs> All right, okay. So uh, I guess uh, Reynad is going to be playing up against Oskaka coming up here in the Losers match. People didn't necessarily expect it to be that way, but only one player can go to the second place match. Who do you think will win between Reynad and Oskaka? Reynad and Oskaka, you think who will win? Who will win? Uh, he thinks Kaka is going to win because he lost him yesterday when they were playing. 
Ah, okay. So uh, it looks like he's going to put his vote in Oskaka's camp. So even more fuel to the fire for Reyna to take that one. And I guess the last question is, uh, do you have any words that you'd like to say to all the fans? We do have a lot of Taiwanese people who tune in to watch you, Roger, as well as uh, everyone else there who's rooting for you. Thanks to all the supporters and everyone who watches him play. Oh, so sweet and short. There we go. So congratulations, Roger. You go to the round of eight, and that'll wrap up our interview here. You can see Roger again tomorrow in day number three where we compete against who will be a second-place finisher of a group. We'll release it at the end of the day. And with that, we're getting ready for our last-place match here. It's elimination time in Group C between Raynan versus Kaka. We'll send it over to, I believe, the couch so we have another opportunity to get ready for our next match.